Welcome to White Lecture Online. So which of these three inverse variation equations is the correct one to associate with those values for y and x? How do we know that in the first place we're looking for an equation that has an inverse variation relationship instead of direct variation relationship? Well notice that when x equals 2, y equals 4. When x becomes bigger, y becomes smaller and that would indicate an inverse relationship, an inverse variation. But which of those equations is it? Well, let's do it one at a time and see which one is the right one. And again, we do that by first finding k in each time and then plug it in the second set of values. So let's try that. So first we plug in the first two values. So y is equal to 4 and that's equal to k divided by x and x is equal to 2. Notice that when I multiply both sides by 2, And we get 8 is equal to k, and so that would be the value for k if it's a relationship like that, where y is inverse related to x. And when we then get the equation y equals 8 over x, and then we plug in the second set of values, we're going to do a check. We plug in y equals 1 and x equals 4, so 1 equals 8 divided by 4, question mark, and of course 1 is not equal to 2, all right? And so therefore that's not the right equation. All right, let's try the second one. Again, we're trying to find the value for k by plugging in the y and the x, so y is equal to 4 when k, well that's k divided by x and x is 2 quantity squared. So notice that we get 4 equals k divided by 4, and now we have to multiply both sides by 4. When we do that, we get 16 is equal to k, which means when we plug into the equation, we get y is equal to 16 divided by x squared, and now we're going to do a check again. We do that by plugging in the second set of values. So notice that y is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4. So 1 is equal to question mark 16 divided by 4 squared. And then you realize that 4 squared is 16, so 1 equals 1. And you realize that, yes, we have the right equation. This here is the correct equation that gives us the proper inverse variation relationship between y and x. It's y is inversely related or inversely equal to 1 over x squared or in this case 16 over x squared I should say. And just to see what would happen if we try the third one, again we plug in the values for y and x, so y is equal to 4 equals k divided by x squared, so that's 2 squared, uh, in this case 2 cubed, that would be 8, so 4 is equal to k divided by 8, in this case we have to multiply both sides by 8, we get 32 is equal to k, so we end up with an equation that tells us that y is equal to 32 divided by x cubed. So this equation right here, now we're going to check to see if that's the correct equation by plugging in the other values for y and x. So y equals 1, x equals 4, so 1 is equal to question mark, 32 divided by 4 cubed. Of course, 4 cubed is 64, so 1 is equal to question mark, 32 divided by 64, and of course that becomes 1 is equal to question mark 1 half, and of course that's not true, so therefore that's not a good equation. Again, the trend. Here notice that the left side is smaller than the right side, here the left side is equal to the right side, here the left side is bigger than the right side, so that gets you in the wrong direction. Notice we're looking for a trend, left side smaller than that, left side equal to that, left side bigger than that. And so right where we cross over, when it's equal, that's where we find the correct equation. And the correct equation is that y is inversely varied with x squared. And that is how it's done. Good? What if it's not those, not that simple? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. She asked me, what if it's not that simple? What if it's not x or x squared of x cubed? What if it's x to the 3 halves or something like that? Well, we have an example for you waiting to do. And so you'll see how it's done when we have a case like that. You have to be patient.